Welcome to the Chorley and Methodist Circuit. This is our opportunity to worship God on an online presence, whether in the live stream that we have on a Sunday or any time during the week. This is an opportunity for us to be looking at justice in the climate, talking climate justice from Christian Aid, a theme throughout Lent. We've had the experience of looking at repentance and the need to turn to God, of sacrifice and what we're giving up. Today, led by the Reverend Karen Hilsden, we look at redemption. What are we redeemed for? This is this opportunity to explore in more depth that Jesus, our Redeemer, the Redeemer of the whole world, is here among us. thousand tongues to sing my great redeemer's praise my great redeemer's praise the glories of my god and king the triumphs of his grace 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 jesus the name that charms our fears that bids our sorrow cease that bids our sorrow cease tis music in the sinners ears tis life and health tis and peace tis life and health and peace tis life and health and peace tis life and health and peace see all your sins on jesus lay the Lamb of God was slain, the Lamb of God was slain. His soul was once an offering made for every soul of man, for every soul of man, for every soul of man, for every soul of man. the power of cancelled sin he sets the prisoner free he sets the prisoner free his blood can make the foulest clean his blood availed his for blood me availed his for blood me. availed for his me his blood availed for me, me. is master and my god assist me to proclaim assist me to proclaim to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name the honors of thy name the honors of thy name In his first letter, the Apostle Peter wrote of the part that Jesus played in God's plan of redemption for our lives. Let's hear his words as we continue to reflect upon the full significance of the cross looming before us as we progress through Lent. Your life is a journey you must travel with a deep consciousness of God. It cost God plenty to get you out of that dead end, empty-headed, mess you were in 
He paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought, even though it has only lately, at the end of the ages, become public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. It's because of this sacrifice, Messiah, whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God, that you know you have a future in God. Let us pray. Great Redeemer, you re journey to the cross meeting us in our weakness, ready and waiting to transform us by your spirit while we were still far off, you sought us out. Great Redeemer, who in spirit groans with all creation for the redemption and renewal of all things, redeem us from our destructive ways, deepen in us the longing for renewal, transform us and the world around us. Amen. One of the teachers of the law of Moses came up while Jesus and the Sadducees were arguing. When he heard Jesus have a, give a good answer, he asked them, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus answered, the most important one is people of Israel, you have only one Lord and God. You must love him with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. The second most important commandment says, love others as much as you love yourself. No other commandment is more important than these. The man replied, Teacher, you are certainly right to say there is only one God. It is also true that we must love God with all our heart, mind and strength, and that we must love others as much as we love ourselves. These commandments are more important than all the sacrifices and offerings that we could possibly make. When Jesus saw that the man had given a sensible answer, he told him, you are not far from God's kingdom. After this, no one dared ask Jesus any more questions. Amen. So Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Here we are in the church. And if we think about that reading, the religious leaders were trying to trick Jesus. The lawyers of the day were always trying to trick Jesus. They were watching closely what Jesus was up to and how could they catch him out this time. We're here in a church where we often understand what God is about, where we often try and confine God to. And yet so often we are challenged in our thinking to be reminded that God is so much bigger than a church building. And this is for an online act of worship where we have embraced technology to be reminded that worship doesn't have to happen in a church building, but can happen online using the wondrous developments in technology. So we hear about these religious leaders of the day trying to trick Jesus. They were there trying to make Jesus fall into a trap. And they were there and trying to find out whether the sacrifice system of the Old Testament was the only way to show your love for God, the only way to express faith and religion of the day. And what we see is Jesus redeeming things that have become distorted. To say it's not about the sacrifice system, that if the people keep on offering burnt offerings, I can live in whatever way I wish. And what happens in Mark chapter 12 is Jesus offers a different vision of life and of what the world can look like when we view things through loving God and loving our neighbours as ourselves 
rather than always putting ourselves first and never mind other people that the world often tries to prescribe. This week, as we are journeying through Lent, we're thinking about redemption. Redemption obviously means being saved from sin, from all that separates us from God. But there is also a further definition of redemption. And that means it talks about the recovery of life and improving morally. Jesus, through his death on the cross, he offers redemption. He offers the recovery of life. He brought the sacrifice system of the Old Testament to an end. It is finished. The temple curtain is torn in two. But Jesus then offers us a different way of looking at life. I'm sure we've all at some point been caught up in a story that's been distorted, where perspective has been lost on what really matters and what has really happened. And how often do we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, have a distorted vision of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus? If I go to church more, if I spend more time in church, if I complete more religious activities, if I do more, God will love me more. How often has the narrative become distorted? And Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34, reminds us that redemption is about regaining perspective. It's about a loving relationship, loving God with heart, mind and all our soul. Redemption, a recovery of life, a recovery of perspective, of what matters, of how life is viewed. This isn't to be hard on us, but it is to be life giving. It's not to be legalistic. It's about grace. It's about love. Some of my favourite words from the message are, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Jesus offers us a different vision, a different vision of the world. One where we do not earn God's love, but are so deeply, deeply loved that Jesus loves us, that he is willing to give his life for us, where he longs for us to recover life. We are redeemed by love, for love. This is the greatest commandment and this is the vision that we are given in the gospel, where we are challenged in loving our neighbour as ourselves, where we are to love God, where we are to love our neighbours as ourselves and to love God with all that we have. The redemption that we receive in the cross through the love he has given will continue to go on transforming us 
It will also be a love that frees us in life, gain, giving us freedom and gaining freedom. We can be set free from some of the narratives the world gives us in order to be free to live a different message, to live in a different way. One where we see things of this world as only for a season, as only for temporary. One where we see things through God's eternal perspective. One that reminds us that we are created as human beings, not human doings. And how often is the world getting that wrong? People are burned out by work, by exhaustion. And how often we can find ourselves being burned out on religion rather than remembering that we are to love God, relationship. The gospel reading calls for us to expand our horizons from just seeing things personally to loving our neighbours too. Christian faith isn't just personal, it's about kingdom life together, about the whole world and the whole of creation and all creatures. So we were thinking in church about the religious leaders trying to trap Jesus. But our Christian faith is not just limited to the church. But when we begin to see things from a different narrative, we see the divine image of our God in our neighbour, 
we see the fingerprint of God in all creation. When we love God, we love the creator of the universe, of the whole world. And we know that God places us at the heart of caring for creation. This transforms our understanding of how we look after the world. God looked at creation and saw that it was good. We are placed as God's hands and feet to care for the world, to love the creation because we love the creator. Love God with all that we are with all that matters to God. We're using material from Christian Aid this Lent, and this is what the writer says. Core to our hope as Christians is redemption. We are awake to our brokenness and our need for grace and forgiveness. We see this on a personal level and in the world around us too. We see it in the injustice of a climate crisis and in the scandal of poverty. When the inherent worth of each in human and the beauty of creation is distorted, we long for something different. We often look to the Easter story to meet us in that longing, Jesus's sacrifice and the hope of resurrection speak to us of a God of redemptive vision and action. This story invites us into the work of God's redemptive purposes. We are called to put right what is wrong. We are part of this transformational work when we love our neighbour, when we tackle the root causes of poverty and the climate emergency. As we will read in our Bible passages, we are not alone in this kingdom building work. We are promised the Holy Spirit who draws alongside us, strengthening us for the challenges of making climate justice a reality. So as we reflect on Jesus' call to love God, heart, mind and soul, to love our neighbours as ourselves, where do we need to recover our sense of perspective? Where do we need to come back to the heart of the gospel? Jesus has already redeemed us, but God invites us to partner in the redemption of the world, regaining perspective about creation. It may be as, but it is as for a season. But what about future generations? How do we care for creation, for future generations and for our neighbours across the world? How do we gain a perspective and regain a perspective on a work-life balance when so many people are so overstretched and stressed? God invites us to know his love and to love him with heart, mind and soul and to love our neighbours as ourselves. And in that way, we learn a different perspective and a way that offers good news to us and to all. Amen.
Redeemer of all creation, we pray for your continual work of redemption in our hearts and in our lives. in our communities, in the systems and structures of our global home, in all of creation. Bring your transformation, put us to the work of redemption in our own hearts and lives, in our own communities in tackling unjust systems and structures, in caring for creation. Empower us by your spirit that we would build your kingdom here and now. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
we trust that you have gained something from sharing with us in our online fellowship today and that your reflections on the theme of redemption have been enriched. Next week is the fourth Sunday in Lent, which of course is also recognised as Mothering Sunday. Roger Stubbings will be sharing with us and we shall no doubt celebrate the occasion and engage with our next Lenten theme of reconciliation. So until next week, go with the blessing of God and in the name of Christ, our Lord and Saviour, to undertake the huge work of redeeming the world, initiated by Jesus himself and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen.